All right, you guys, we're just going to do a quick video on mid segments of triangles and trapezoids. So the big ideas are mid segment simply connects the endpoints of two sides. We specifically talk about mid segments in triangles and trapezoids. So in a triangle, there's always three mid segments, right? Because there's three midpoints and you can connect them in one, two, three separate line segments. So there's three mid segments in every triangle. And then in a trapezoid, we only talk about the mid-segment connecting the legs. And so uh, we'll get to the properties in a second. But that's the only one. We don't talk about the mid-segment connecting these two sides. We don't talk about the mid-segment connecting the base to the base. But technically, there are a lot more mid-segments in this shape. The only one of interest to us is the one that goes between the two legs. All right, so I just wrote trapezoids only of one, although... Technically, they have a lot. There's only one interesting one for us. Okay, so the properties are, this is just big picture, that a mid-segment is always parallel to the third side of a triangle, or in the trapezoid, it's parallel to the two bases, and it's the average of the two bases, or it's half the length. So basically, it's parallel and something to do with half. So here we go in picture form. If we connect the two midpoints in a triangle, we get that it is automatically parallel to the base. And whatever length this is, you have half the length right here. Okay. Similarly, in a trapezoid, you have it is parallel to the two bases. And it's the average of the two lengths. So you add the B1 plus B2 and divide by 2. It's actually really this is just a trapezoid where the top length is 0. And so the average of 0 plus 2x, the two bases, divided by 2, comes out to be x. So it's actually one rule for both, um, but we look at it in two separate ways. Okay, so parallel to the other side, half the length, or in a trapezoid, the average of the two bases. That's it. That's the property. We'll talk about the y, and I'll do examples, but that's the nuts and the bolts. Okay, so the y, we'll do a quick proof here. So this is just the mid-segment of a triangle. What we do is we extend this side a little bit such that it is congruent, okay? And then we just go, oh, okay, well, let's fill out this shape. So I'm gonna draw this line in here. And now look at this. We have vertical angles and sides matching. So by SAS, these two triangles match, okay? So these two triangles are the same by SAS. And then we go, well, shoot, that means some of their pieces are the same. So that means, for example, this angle is the same as this angle right? Just by CPCTC. But wait a second, if those angles are the same, this is the transversal showing us that by alternate interior angles, these lines must be parallel. Okay, that's useful. Uh, also, we have by CPCTC that this side matches this side over here. So I could put a one dash over here. And one of our rules of how to prove something is a parallelogram is if opposite one pair of uh, opposite sides in a four-sided shape are both parallel and congruent, then that's a parallelogram. If you wanted to go through the nuts and bolts of it, you just draw a diagonal and go, oh, parallel lines mean alternate interior angles. This by reflexive property. So by CPCT, or I mean congruent triangles by SAS, CPCTC, yada yada you get angles are congruent so then this is parallel so i just proved it up there in a nutshell but that was sufficient to show that then this shape here that i'm outlining in green is a parallelogram which means this side here is congruent to this side here so this which t exactly two of them make up the top side is equal to the bottom so boom we just proved that if this is x then this is 2x so it's half the length done and it's a parallelogram so opposite sides parallel so it's parallel so boom proven that every mid segment we just extended it use some congruent triangles but every mid segment of a triangle is both parallel to the other side and it's half the length i'm going to do a little more hand wavy for a chapter we could rigorously prove it but I just thought we'd go into the uh, kind of coordinate geometry of it for me. So basically, all a mid-segment is, is whatever this coordinate is, like x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. If you want to get 
from x1 over to x2, instead of going the whole way, the midpoint is just going half of that distance over. And then instead of going the whole way up, we go half of the way up. So over and up, over and up. So whatever length this is, we go over A, up B. We go over A again, up B. And so these two triangles are exactly the same. But the big idea here is what we've done is we've gone halfway in between these two values. On the other side, we do the same thing. We go halfway in between the two values and we get a length of this total segment that is halfway between the shorter length and the longer length because we've literally gone halfway in between the x values on both sides. So I like to think about it just pure numeric algebra one. We've literally gone halfway between the two lengths in terms of the x values. Um, you could also quickly just find the slopes of these lines. Uh, just erasing these colors. Okay, so you could just find the slopes of these lines, or you could have just used these congruent triangles to see like, oh wait, then CPCTC, these angles match, so then these lines must be parallel. And so there's lots of ways to prove this, but it's the same thing as the other. So it's the mid-segment is parallel to the other two sides, and whatever lengths these are, B1 and B2, this is the average of those. So you add them together and you divide by two. Now let's actually apply it, okay? So here we go. First one is how many mid-segments does a triangle have? A triangle can connect these three midpoints. So you have one, two, three mid-segments. And it's actually really interesting. Uh, something I didn't mention is when you draw those three mid-segments, so I'm going to, woo clean that up a little bit. Here's a point, a point. Oh, I should just draw it fast. Okay. There we go. So if we do that, wow, that was what it came up with. All right, we'll I'll do it slower. So if we do this, we go, this is a midpoint. This is a midpoint. This is a midpoint. And we know each mid segment is half the length of the other side. So half of this whole side is exactly one of those three dash sides half of this length is one dash half of this length is two dash and so by sss we've actually just cut the triangle into four congruent triangles oh interesting interesting that's just an interesting fact so a triangle is three mid segments trapezoid we only talk about the one interesting one so that's the answer number one what's the perimeter of t o p oh that's a tricky one well this is a midpoint, so if that's 8, this is 8. And this is 10, so this is 10. And so the uh, perimeter is just you add those up. Total of 16, total of 20. So that's a perimeter of 56. Okay, what about this one? Well, we've got the midpoint on the left, midpoint on the right. That means this is parallel to this, which means two things. We've got 180 degree turn here. That's one thing, and erase all that, and we've got corresponding angles. Okay, so just showing you, so now I'm going to switch to a smaller pen. So we've got this is 60 degrees, and because of the 180 degree turn here, ah, let's leave it in there, then this is 140 degrees. And we could actually find all the angles. That means this is 40 degrees, that means this is 120 degrees, complete the triangle, this is 80 degrees, so we could find more angles than just those two. All right, what about this one? Oh shoot, dang, look at this. Well, what we could do is we can go, here's congruent to the other side, here's congruent to the other side, here's congruent, again, that's because this is half the length of this side. Okay, so we have all of those, plus we have parallel, so this one's parallel, this one, and so on and so forth. So. If that's 65, this side is parallel to this side because it's a mid-segment. So that means this is 65 degrees. These triangles are also congruent. So I could just go, um, let's see, between the 1 and the 2 side by CPCTC, that's 65 degrees. So like that's one way to do this problem. Or we could just go, oh, let's keep completing it. So if this is 42 in the bottom left, that means this is 42 degrees triangle here is 180 so that's 107 so this is 73 and then we could go this is 180 
So 42 plus 73 is 115, and minus that from 180, and we get the same 65. So lots of different ways to do that problem. Cool. Okay, what is the perimeter of TEN? Ooh, a little harder. Well, again, we, oh, this is not harder. I thought we were going to have to use that middle triangle at all. So here's just completing. These are all midpoints. So I just added the rest. So that's 12 plus 16 plus 18. These make 30 plus 16. So that's 46. Okay. What about the next one? M, N, P. Okay. Well, again, it shows me we're connecting the midpoints. I need that information. So that means this is parallel. So that means this is 73 degrees. That means this one over here is 51 degrees. And then I go 180 minus or... I just do, here's a 180 degree turn, same side, consecutive interior angles. So this is 129 degrees. And this is the average of the two. So P equals 36 plus 48 divided by 2, or in other words, 70, 84 divided by 2, or 42. A quick way to double check if that 42 is correct is you go like this, you go, well, what did I add? I added six to get there. And if it's a good average, then I add six to get the rest. Boom, that's the average, halfway in between. All right, what about O, Q, dang. So one way is just straight formula. The mid segment is equal to the base plus the other base divided by two. It's the same formula, there's nothing different. It doesn't matter which thing's a letter, which one's a number, it's the same formula. And then you solve, or you could simply go, well, I went up by 11, so I go up by 11, so this is 35. Or you go back over to this problem on the other side, and you go, oh, well, let's multiply by 2 on both sides. That's 48 equals 13 plus Q. Let's subtract the 13 on both sides, and we get Q is equal to 35. Good, it worked out both ways. It should. So that was it. Just some quick practice problems with the algebra. Again, the nuts and bolts. A mid-segment connects the midpoints of two sides. These are different markings here and here. We have a midpoint with one dash and one dash and a totally different midpoint with two dash, two dash. So if we connect those two midpoints, we get something that's parallel to the other side and half of its length. So in a triangle, if I connect the midpoint of these two sides, and this is 10, that means this is five and parallel, okay? And then a trapezoid, we just talk about the one mid-segment. It's parallel to two bases and the average. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video.